welcome everybody to my session, Microsoft Teams for Developers, an introduction. We are at the top of the hour, so let's get started. Um, my name is Jan Greekmans and I work as a cloud solution architect uh, in Belgium with a broad focus on the whole of Microsoft Cloud. I'm also an Office Development MVP where I'm mainly active uh, in the uh, space of SharePoint and Microsoft Teams. You can find my Twitter handle and the URL to my blog on the slides. Uh, feel free to reach out. I try to respond to everything that's coming my way. Let's take a look at the agenda first. For some reason, this clicker isn't working, so let's do it like this. Um, let's take a look at the agenda first. Uh, we'll start with an introduction, and then uh, I'll describe what we mean when we talk about Microsoft Teams as a service and Microsoft Teams as a platform. Um, and in the end, I'll help you get started in your own journey to become a That's funny. I got muted by someone else. Please don't do that because that will make for a very special delivery of my session. Um, so we've got through the agenda. Um, the One of the most important things we have to do now is uh, set expectations. Um, this session is a level 100 introduction into the extensibility points of Microsoft Teams. I'll go through everything that you can build on top of Microsoft Teams and using Microsoft Teams. We'll check out the different tools and SDKs and the available samples and templates provided by Microsoft and the community that you can use as building blocks for your own um, applications. But I won't be covering the specifics on how to build um, these experiences and your own applications. So as a result, I won't be showing a lot of code. This means that if this is not what you expected, there's no harm done, but feel free to check out one of the four other awesome sessions that are going on in uh, the other rooms. Um, it's no problem if you have to switch now. Um, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page here. Let's get started. Let's start by checking out how Microsoft Teams is positioned by Microsoft. At the launch and in the launch blog post in 2016, Microsoft defined uh, Microsoft Teams as the new chat-based workspace, bringing together people, conversations, and content. Um, if we take a look at the Wikipedia definition, they also add unified communication and application integration into the mix. So you see that this is already expanding upon the original um, like definition by Microsoft. As a result, this is a quite bulky definition. So uh, Microsoft Marketing changed it to Microsoft Teams is the hub for teamwork. This covers everything, but it says almost nothing. Um, you don't know what, what it's covering. So um, lately, we've seen them use Microsoft Teams as a service and Microsoft Teams as a platform to make this more clear. Although I'm not sure um, they actually achieved this goal. So it's up to us to uh, look into what this means. Um, first of all, Microsoft Teams as a service is when we talk about extending your own applications with functionalities from Microsoft Teams. So you bring Microsoft Teams functionality into your applications. On the other hand, you've got Microsoft Teams as a platform. This is where you extend Microsoft Teams itself and bring your applications into the familiar look and feel of the Microsoft Teams clients. Microsoft Teams as a service is driven by Microsoft Graph. This means that all interactions between your application and the functionalities of Microsoft Teams is done through the APIs exposed in Microsoft Graph. We already got a good introduction in Microsoft Graph by Paul in the previous session. So, um, I'll just run through with a quick recap uh, what Microsoft Graph is. So Microsoft Graph is one API endpoint to rule them all. It exposes the data inside of your organization through a set of APIs that enable you to build applications to interact with that data. This is a major improvement over the workload specific APIs we used to have where SharePoint had a different API versus uh, Teams having a different API versus Exchange having a different API. And 
their goal now is to integrate all of these APIs in a, in a familiar way right inside Microsoft Teams and uh, in Microsoft Graph. And Microsoft Teams is part of this uh, application uh, layer. Now, when I talk about Microsoft Teams APIs that exist in Microsoft Graph, I split them up in two uh, different categories. The first category is the, are the management APIs. Um, management APIs are used to interact with resources that exist in Microsoft Teams. Resources in this context um, mean teams and groups, but also owners and members, channel steps and applications and shifts happening uh, in Microsoft Shifts. Most of these resources and these, these API endpoints, they support the standard list create, read, update and delete actions. Um, and some of them have even more advanced actions available. I'm only listing uh, the application endpoints specific for Microsoft Teams. Of course, you can still use all the uh, API endpoints that are associated with groups. Because as, you, as most of you are aware, Teams are built on top of Office 365 groups, so we can still use all of those application endpoints as well to interact with teams and groups. These API endpoints, for example, would allow you to create an external application like a provisioning tool that collects information from your external users or, or your end users um, to provision a team with the correct information or the correct configuration right inside Microsoft Teams adding specific channels, teams, uh, tabs, and applications uh, already through one unified provisioning experience. Now, the other set of APIs are the communication APIs. These are rather new, um, and they allow your application to participate in conversations that are happening in Microsoft Teams. Conversations, I mean both chat messages and calls, so for chat messages, your application could go list all the messages available, but also read and send additional chat messages right inside a team, a group chat, or a one-on-one -on -one com uh, communication. For calls, this is mainly used in bots uh, through the bot framework. So in that case, your bot can interact with incoming calls by answering or rejecting them redirecting them to a different uh, user, mute or unmute participants, uh, change the participant lists, add new participants, uh, etc. Now imagine an application that allows you, uh, your end users or external users to schedule meetings with you. Um, they fill in a set of information or a set of fields, and then it calls an API to create the online meeting right inside the correct user's calendar. Now you want to have an online meeting in there. So you want to have a Microsoft Teams join link in there. Then you can use the online meetings endpoint. This will create an invitation right inside the uh, user's uh, calendar with a join link for a Microsoft Teams call. And the last one has been heavily requested and it's also quite new uh, and recent addition to Microsoft Graph is the ability for applications to read the presence information of one user or a group of users to check out if they're available or away or do not disturb and what their reason for being in that status is. Microsoft Teams as a service is mostly do it yourself. These are all very powerful APIs that we all uh, already see uh, seen, but to use them in your application, it's mostly something you have to build out yourself. In case of the man management APIs, there are a lot of samples available by Microsoft or from the community, but they almost never cover your specific use case. We all are aware of um, a business case in one client and a business case at the other client. They look very similar, but they're in the end uh, significantly different that you still have to build everything uh, from scratch again. Now from the communications APIs, like I said, they are a very recent addition. This uh, also means that there are almost no ready-made or reference solutions available, not by Microsoft and not by um, the community. This is getting better. Um, I think that Rick van Roosselt later today will cover some of these communication MP, uh, APIs. And both of the management APIs and the communications APIs, specifically for Microsoft Teams, 
they struggle from um, moving very slowly from beta to the um, to the V1 endpoint. Let me check something. Okay, to the V1 endpoint. This means um, that. APIs that are available in beta only, they aren't supposed to be used in production applications, which might limit your um, vision on how your application should work. Time to switch gears and cover Microsoft Teams as a platform. Microsoft Teams as a platform, um, it's where we bring our applications right inside the familiar fabric of the Microsoft Teams client. We divide this or these applications in four different uh, categories. The first one, they're arranged from left to right, going from simple and easy to build over to more complex open um, source solutions and ending with applications that you have to build from scratch. Now, if you take a look at the ready-made solutions, these are the solutions that are made available by Microsoft or some third-party partners um, in the team store already. You can open up your Teams client, go into the Teams store, and find all the applications that are currently available. Over 100 of these applications have been made available by either Microsoft or partners. They have gone through a lot of vetting and they are approved by Microsoft. This, you can see a lot of them on the screen already, but of course they can be managed on a tenant level, which means that if you go into your environment, you might see uh, a lot less or different applications available. Moving on to the low code uh, power platform, because they also have the ability to be integrated into Microsoft Teams. The first session of today um, already showed that a little bit. Um, first of all, you can use the, you can embed a power app right inside Microsoft Teams as a tab, but you can also interact with Teams through the out-of-the-box connectors that are available in Power Apps and Power Automate. You can see here in one of these, uh, in, in this screenshot, that there is an approval process going on for an item created in SharePoint. Um, and depending on the response, um, either an approval message or a decline um, message will be posted right inside the HR Leadership Team Reviews channel uh, through the Microsoft Teams connector right inside Power Automate. Reference solutions is a third category. They're also known as app templates. These are production ready, community driven open source solutions available on GitHub. You can see a list of them on the right hand side and they cover a wide range of use cases already. Um, they all come with a step by step installation instruction, but they do require some technical expertise as you might uh, need to compile the code yourself or create some resources within Azure. Um, these app templates or reference solutions come with a detailed documentation and support through the GitHub issues list. Um, they're supported directly by Microsoft FTEs, but also by uh, the community that created some of these uh, reference solutions. The good thing about these are that if they don't completely cover your needs, you can just customize them or extend them. Um, and if that doesn't work out and you need something completely different, at least you can use these as building blocks or as a reference when you uh, build your own custom applications. So talking about custom applications, this is the part um, where I get most excited. Um, the custom built applications is how you bring your existing or new solutions right inside Microsoft Teams. When you want to bring your solution into Microsoft Teams, it uh, exists out of two parts. So it either has, it has to integrate with the interface of Microsoft Teams, which can be with a tab or a bot, an adaptive card, a messaging extension, a task module, notifications or connectors and webhooks. And it also needs a backend uh, to host your application logic. The backend and most common use cases here um, is Azure or hosted on SharePoint or the Power Platform, of course, interacting with Microsoft Graph. A custom built application exists out of three components. The first component is the, the Teams application itself. This is just a zip file that you can use and integrate uh, in Teams or in the Teams store. 
And this zip file contains only three files. It contains the manifest.json, which is describing all of your application extensibilities um, that you want to expose right inside Microsoft Teams, and two image files. Both are icons right for your, um, for your application. The color icon is used in, uh, in the store and in the flyout menu for your applications. Um, the outline icon is used when you pin your application in the left-hand rail of your uh, Teams client. The second part is an app registration in one of the many portals that Microsoft is using in the cloud. For some of the applications, you need an Azure Active Directory app registration, like Paul already showed in his previous session. Um, specifically for tabs that require, for example, single sign-on, this is a required step to take. Um, if you are working with the bot framework or by creating bots, you have to register your bot with the bot framework to get a bot ID that can be used in the manifest to connect both um, together. And the same goes for Outlook connectors that have to be registered in the Outlook connector uh, developer portal and that you can use in your manifest file as well. Now, the bulk of the work happens in your application logic, of course. For most of the Teams um, integrations, this means either a web application with server-side logic and or client-side logic um, or a web service. For tabs, a web application is mostly used. Now for bot framework and Outlook connectors, uh, we mostly go for web service or web APIs. Then the manifest. This is the um, important part of your Teams application because this is what Teams uses um, to read out what you want to do or what, you, what additional functionality you want to bring right inside Microsoft Teams. First, it contains some general information like the manifest version, but also the developer name and some website URLs for the developer. Uh, it supports localization, so it, uh, you can tell it which languages you support within your application. And you have to give your application a name and a description. Both show up in the application or in the Teams UI, in the Teams store, and when adding a Teams uh, application to Teams or a channel. Now, the last part are the empty arrays on the bottom of, uh, of the manifest file. These, one, these ones right here, uh, not sure, yeah. So these ones right here. These are the empty arrays that describe the specific functionality that you want to use. So we've got the configurable tabs. Those are the tabs that are used in the team scope, the static tabs in the personal scope, the bots, the connectors, and the compose extensions. You already see all the, the three different, uh, uh, all the different extensibility points right inside this manifest file. Now, moving on, the last thing before we get to all the extensibility points are scoping. When you create an application that has to be hosted or used in Microsoft Teams, you define or you decide in which scope it can be available. An application can either be Teams scoped or personal scoped. The, a Teams scoped application uh, is supposed to surface information that is relevant to all the people in a specific uh, team or a channel. Now, a Teams application that is scoped to the personal scope, it's supposed to surface information that's available only to one user to the signed in user, to you as a user that installed this application in the personal scope. One of the best examples is Microsoft Planner application because it supports both. In the team scope, when you add it to a team or a channel, it shows all the tasks that are available for that team. Now, if you activate it in the personal scope, it only shows your specific tasks, the tasks that are assigned to you. But this is a clear separation of the purpose of uh, a team scoped and a personal scoped application. So we've covered all the basics. Let's check out each extensibility point into detail. The first one are the tabs. Tabs can be added to a team or a channel or to a group chat. 
So they're available in, in both uh, a team or channel or a group chat, but also in the personal scope specific to one user. In essence, a team step is nothing more than embedded web page using iframes to surface your existing or new website right inside Microsoft Teams. Now, this is not very exciting, but you can um, make your website Teams aware by using the uh, JavaScript SDK for tabs that is made available by Microsoft. When you use this SDK, um, you can read the context of the Teams. This means that your website can know which user is logged in, in which team or channel the website is opened, um, your application could read all the members of the channel or of the team and act on all of that information. Like I said, a tab is supported in both team scope and personal scope. In personal scope, it's just one page. There's no configuration and no removal page possible. Now, when, um, when you create a team scoped application, it allows you to, besides the content page, excuse me, also uh, create a configuration page. A configuration page for the people that already have added, for example, a OneNote tab to Microsoft Teams, you will see that you get a pop-up first asking you which specific OneNote um, notebook you want to add to the team. This is where your configuration page come in. Uh, imagine a scenario where you need some additional information for from the team's owner before you can show the web page. And then there's the removal page. This is uh, shown right when you remove the tab from your team. Imagine a case where you store information in your external system uh, about this specific team or information is entered. When this tab is removed, you can ask the user whether you can keep the information or it has to be removed from your systems. Now, since this is just a website, the technology is um, just web technology. You can use whatever technology that, uh, that you're familiar with to create or build a website. Now, we most commonly see Node.js and React being used or ASP.NET Core or ASP.NET MVC. For all the people that are Java, uh, SharePoint developers and have experience with the SharePoint framework, in the last versions 1.9 and 1.10, uh, of the SharePoint Framework Generator, we got support for exposing a SharePoint Framework solution as a tab in Microsoft Teams. With 1.9, this was team scoped, and with 1.10, it also supports personal scope. In the manifest, it looks like this. So you have the configurable tabs array and the static tabs array. The configurable tabs array uh, is where you put all your team steps. You can define the configuration URL and whether or not the user can update the configuration afterwards. And you define the scopes. Is your tab uh, available for use in team or in a group chat or in both? This is an array. So this means you can add multiple of those configurable tabs or team scope tabs to your application. Now, static tabs is also an array. This is for where you put all the um, personal scope tabs that your application wants to expose in Microsoft Teams. While this is an array, currently only one of those personal scoped tabs is supported in each application. We move on to the conversational bots. Conversational bots is all the new hype. Um, seems like everyone wants to build a bot and also in Microsoft Teams you can expose these bots uh, for an improved experience with your end users. Uh, you see in the animated GIF on the left hand side um, uh, an FAQ bot that answers questions and asks for feedback. A bot is built on top of the bot framework v4. Uh, it used to be v3 but for everyone starting now I recommend you checking out bot framework v4 and at least version 4.6, because it will make a lot of things a lot easier uh, when building bots for Microsoft Teams. A bot is registered in the Microsoft uh, bot framework, and it is combined with a publicly accessible web service. This is basically the application logic that will process all the input that's coming from your end users. 
a bot in Microsoft Teams can also be Teams aware. So it can read the membership over Microsoft Teams uh, and the same way like Microsoft, like the tabs in, uh, in, a, in a team could. And your bot can support text, interactive cards or task modules as responses. So if I ask a question to the bot, the bot can answer with just a simple text message or it can return an interactive card with buttons to ask more um, information. Configuring a bot in your manifest file uh, looks like this. So you need a bot ID for, uh, from uh, the bot framework and you define the scopes in which your bot is available, team, personal, and group chat. And then you define the command list. Um, the command list is a set of commands for specific scopes. So you see that we got both, uh, that we got two command lists available, uh, one for the scopes team and group chat, and the other one for personal and group chat. This means that you can expose different commands to different um, scoped experiences in Microsoft Teams. And then the third one are messaging extensions. These are very powerful, but I don't see them being used as much, um, although they're, they can be very interesting to create um, or to have functionality for in your uh, Teams application. A messaging extension extends I, uh, one of three things. It's either on top the command bar that can be extended um, on a specific message you can add an action into the more actions menu, or you can add functionality to the um, text area bar where you type your message. Messaging extensions come in three flavors. The first one is action-based. An action-based um, command allows you to present your users with a model pop-up to collect or display information. And when they submit the form, your web service can then respond by inserting um, something into the conversation directly or just inserting a message into the text area or the compose message area um, for the user to submit that information. Um, these action-based commands can be triggered from all three of these extensibility points. So from the compose message, message, message area, the command box, or from messages itself. When you trigger it from messages, your um, web service will receive the complete message on which it was triggered. In the manifest file, it looks like this. So you define once again the bot ID because messaging extensions are also built on top of the bot framework and you define the comments again. So, and then the context. And the context here is important because you tell them uh, Microsoft Teams where the command should be available. Uh, remember, it's compose message area, command box, or messages. The second of these me messaging extensions is a search-based extension. Um, imagine a scenario where you have an external system that you want to query right when you're typing a message in Microsoft Teams to uh, provide information from that external system in context in Microsoft Teams. So with the search-based messaging extension, you can add this functionality to both the command box and the component message area, but not to messages itself. Technology, once again, is the bot framework v4, and the integration uh, is done uh, through cards. We'll return to cards uh, in a minute, but how it works is two types of cards are returned. You create an interface with a search box, where, like in, in this uh, example here, it's sales in an external system, and you can search for a specific report and it returns preview cards in this pop-up uh, dialog, and then you can select one of these uh, reports in that pop-up, and when it's entered into the message, a full card will be displayed. For example, the full report or, uh, or something else, or maybe a preview image. So it's up to you in your web service to uh, reply with both a preview card and a full card for rendering right inside Microsoft Teams. This is very similar as the uh, action-based um, 
messaging extension, only the type is changed from being search. And of course, like I said, it only supports compose and command box as um, context parameters and not messages. The last one is also a fairly recent addition. It supports for link unfurling. We all know um, when you copy paste a URL in Microsoft Teams or for example in Twitter, um, Twitter and Teams try to render a cool preview card for that website. Now maybe you have an external system right inside your company that you also want to render um, a preview card for, then you can use link unfurling. So you configure this to watch specific uh, URLs or domains. And when people are using this URL in the Compose message area, your bot is triggered or your, um, your web service is triggered and you can respond with a, um, with a preview card for this URL. In the example here on the right hand side, you see that uh, we're using the Lucidchart URL for a specific chart or diagram in Lucidchart, then our web service can fetch that diagram and return it as a card right inside Microsoft Teams, giving you the op opportunity with buttons to open the diagram or accept an invitation and edit. In the manifest file, it looks like this. So it, it's a type link and you specify the domains that uh, you want to handle in your application logic. We still have two more to go, task modules and cards. Task modules are pop-ups. They're not used um, independently, but they're invoked from your um, tabs, bots, or maybe externally via deep link. So you can link directly into this pop-up dialog. Basically, uh, this module dialog or this task module is just a Microsoft Teams tab in a pop-up. It can use custom HTML and JavaScript, an iframe-based widget, or you can render adaptive cards inside this pop-up. This is used for if you want to request additional information from a user, for example. Now, cards are a declarative, declarative UI. It's basically a JSON object that describes what you want to show, but not how it's rendered, because the style is automatic and it comes from the host application. This means that you can define what you want to see and that, for example, Skype and Microsoft Teams render the same information, but in a different way. Microsoft Teams supports three different card types. The connector cards for Office 365 connectors, um, simple cards directly from the bot framework, but also the new kid on the block, the adaptive cards. My recommendation is to use adaptive cards as much as possible because it's also cross-platform um, and cross-workload. So you can use the same adaptive card in Outlook and in Teams, but also in your connectors, bots, and messaging. Yeah, we are, and then you're gonna start uh, using uh, this week in We've got someone unmuted. And then the last extensibility option um, you've got are the webhooks and connectors. Webhooks come in two flavors, the outgoing webhook, which means that you um, have a web service already available with, on the URL and you just register it right inside Microsoft Teams. By giving it a name, you can add mention it and send the text from the command box uh, or the compose message area right to your application logic and then your web service can send a response. Downside is that you cannot use a custom configuration page or it cannot be packaged as a Teams application. This means that you have to re-register your web service in each team or channel that you want to use it. Well, we can also have incoming webhooks. This is where you create an, a URL in Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Teams will generate a URL for you uh, on which it will listen for messages that you send to it. Um, so your web service or your application logic has to be configured with this specific URL and can send information there. Problem in this case is that 
uh, the same as with the outgoing webhook, you cannot have a custom configuration page and it cannot be packaged as a Teams application. So we can take this incoming webhook and we can improve upon it uh, by creating an Office 365 connector. This means that you register your webhook in the Office 365 uh, connector dev portal. Um, and this will allow it to have a custom configuration page, but you can also use it to package it as a Teams application. So if you do it like that, you can see the manifest on the left. Um, you enter the connector ID and the configuration URL in the manifest file. And this way you can activate your Office 365 connector or your incoming webhook um, across different themes and channels. Now that we've run through all of the um, extensibility points, what do you need to get started uh, with this Teams development? You can do all of it from scratch, um, of course, so you can create everything yourself, but I recommend taking a look at the Yeoman generator for Microsoft Teams, especially for the um, Microsoft SharePoint developers that are already um, used to using SharePoint Framework. This generator for SharePoint Framework is also built on top of the Yeoman generator. In addition to that, take also a look at the Microsoft Teams App Studio. It's an application that exists uh, right inside Microsoft Teams and it helps you build your manifest file for your application. So you don't have to go manually edit the JSON file. I still have some time, so I'll switch over to a live demo of this, um, of both of, uh, of them. So I switch over to Windows Terminal and you can install the Yeoman generator for Microsoft Teams through NPM, which is the node package manager on which um, the Teams generator is made available. Once you have it installed, you can type Yo, and you can see that it will uh, try and run the Yeoman uh, generator and it will show me which generators I have available. I have the Teams generator, but also the Microsoft SharePoint uh, generator for SharePoint framework. Um, I can select the generator out of this list, but you can also go Yo Teams directly and drop directly right inside the Teams generator. It will ask you a couple of questions. So it will ask you the name of your solution um, and it will propose a default one. So I'll just enter and it will keep the uh, demo Teams Fest as the name of the solution. It will ask you where to place your files. Uh, I will keep the current folder and it will ask a title for our application project. I will keep the suggested uh, information. My company name, just keep my name. And then it will ask you which manifest ver version you would like to use. Um, it supports 1.3, 1.4 and 1.5. I suggest that for new applications, you use the highest possible manifest uh, version because it will give you the most functionalities uh, to integrate with Microsoft Teams. You also have the dev preview version, which is the future version of the manifest uh, schema, but this is also only supported in Teams clients that have the developer mode turned on. So for broad distribution, I recommend uh, using 1.5 at this time. We we'll skip the partner ID, and you can see here that it will ask you um, which functionalities you want to build. Um, so you can just with spacebar, select additional um, functionalities. I will keep a Microsoft uh, Teams tab for now. That's the easiest way. And you will have to provide the URL to your backend application logic. It suggests an Azure website's uh, address, so we'll keep it. Um, for now, we will not include a test framework and we will not use the Azure application insights for telemetry. Um, you need a tab name, and we have to decide whether or not it's a personal or a static tab, um, a, a personal or a team scope tab. So let's take a personal um, step in this case, and you can see that it will generate all the files and um, already load everything from NPM. So download all the packages needed to run your application. Once this is done, it will take some time, so I will not wait for it. Um, you can use the gulp commands to build and package the solution. And as a result, you get both uh, a Teams app 
the zip file you can upload in your Teams client, as well as the application logic you can host on Azure or maybe AWS or your own application service uh, in your company. Let's switch back to the um, app, like the presentation. Um, you can see here, once again, running through, I'm not sure if we have to wait for it. So you can see this is sped up. It will install all the packages and then you can do go build and it will create all of your um, resources that you can use. This will also allow you to uh, use Visual Studio Code, for example, to debug um, right when you're developing. Now, the last thing I want to show is the App Studio. So the App Studio is an application that you install right inside Microsoft Teams. So you can go to the three dots, you find more applications, and you can see all of the applications that are available in the store, and you can find App Studio. As you can see here, it shows up in the search. You click on it and you can add it to your Teams. Well, I have already added it, so it shows open. But if you don't have it in your Teams application yet, it will show Add to Teams as a button here. Now, like I told you, when you install it, it will show up in this flyout menu. So this is the App Studio and it uses the color icon to uh, visualize the application in the flyout menu. Now, if you right click, you have the ability to pin it and pin this custom application to your left hand rail in Microsoft Teams for quick access. You see that it uses a different icon, the outline icon to visualize your application in here. If we click it, you get a lot of functionality inside Microsoft Teams um, for building custom applications in Teams. The first one is the chat. This allows you to chat with a bot that will help you search through the developer documentation for Microsoft Teams. The second one is the manifest editor. It allows you to create a new application or import an existing application uh, that's, for example, been created by the Yeoman generator to um, import it and adjust or make some modifications. You can see here that I already have imported a specific application um, that I created. It's available on my GitHub as well. This allows you to embed any SharePoint application page, modern SharePoint application page from your site in Microsoft Teams with SSO. So if you look through, you can click on it and then walk through the manifest. You see here the name of the app, the short name and the full name, the app ID, the package name, and the description, all the information that we saw previously in the manifest file itself. The branding icons that are used, um, so you have the full color, the outline, the accent color um, icons that you need, and then the capabilities. So you can define your tabs and your bots, your connectors and your messaging extensions through a visual UI in the App Studio. Finishing up, you can add additional languages that you support, some domains and app IDs to uh, improve single sign-on. And then the last part is test and distribute. On this pane, it allows you to install your application directly in your current Teams client, or you can download it and save the package for distribution and submission or you can submit the app directly to the Microsoft Teams App Store for review and approval if you uh, would like your application to be available for everyone uh, in the whole wide world in the official Microsoft Teams Store. Wrapping up, we saw Microsoft Teams as a service is all about bringing Microsoft Teams functionalities to your applications. This is all done through the APIs that are exposed in Microsoft Graph. Now, Microsoft Teams as a platform is all about bringing your applications to Microsoft Teams and integrating them into the um, familiar fabrics of the Microsoft Teams clients. This is, by the way, supported both in desktop and mobile clients. And this is done by creating tabs, bots, uh, task modules, um, command extensions, uh, compose extensions, and connectors. 
this brings us to the end of my um, presentation and my session. I just want to call out the sessions that are happening today in room four, uh, all about development and the power platform, because I'm pretty sure that all the sessions that are still following um, uh, the next hours in this room will dive a lot deeper into the specific functionalities that I just touched upon high level. Um, so if you want to learn more on how to actually build um, these applications, um, I suggest you um, follow up on all these sessions that are happening uh, the rest of the day. I put a slide in with all the resources and links for uh, following up afterwards. So it's the overview of the Teams APIs in Microsoft Graph, how to get started with Teams as a platform and how to do development, links to a lot of code samples and application templates or reference solutions that you can use um, directly or just um, as input for your own applications, a link to the SDKs for Microsoft Graph, the TAP SDKs, uh, JavaScript SDK, or the Node.js and C Sharp Pod SDKs, and some Microsoft Learn resources that allow you to um, read and learn through uh, questions and forms uh, about how to develop for Microsoft Teams. And then a link for the Adaptive Cards Designer. I don't have the time to show it, but this is a, a cool resource if you want to build out your uh, adaptive card, JSON, to use in Microsoft Teams or in any other workload that supports adaptive cards. Last thing to call out, please rate my session. I really like to know how I did, um, and it helps me improve my presentation uh, for the next time I have to do this. Um, like I said, there are more sessions happening both in room four as well as the other uh, rooms that are available. Um, we like to ask you to uh, show your love for our event on Twitter by using hashtag TeamsFest. And please check out the keynotes by the um, Microsoft uh, or the very well known Microsoft people, Caruana Gatimo and Visa Yuvonen, later today. Um, with this, I end my presentation. Thank you very much for attending. Um, if you have more questions, I will follow up in the chat. If I don't have time to answer them uh, now, feel free to reach out uh, through Twitter or LinkedIn or any other way you can find me um, and I'll make sure to get an answer for you. Thank you very much and have a nice day.